With us now is one of over 350 charities and nonprofits supported on the Share Detroit platform. For over 45 years, ALS of Michigan has been providing services and support to families affected by ALS, otherwise known as Lou Gehrig's disease. And joining us now on the program is the executive director of ALS of Michigan, Kim Graziotti, joins us now on the Megacast. Kim, thanks for being with us today. Hi, thank you for having me. Glad to have you on. And as I mentioned, for, for uh, 45 plus years, ALS of Michigan has been providing support to families and individuals that are affected by ALS right here in Michigan. So uh, for those that aren't familiar, tell us, uh, or, or maybe uh, don't know exactly what ALS is, they've heard of it, they know it's Lou Gehrig's disease, but they don't know exactly how it affects individuals and families. Explain to us what ALS is. Well, ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It's a disease that generates the body's muscles, making it hard to move, speak, swallow, and sadly, eventually difficult to breathe. Um, ALS um, has a higher prevalence in the Midwest. Um, it's affected people usually between the ages of 40 and 70. Um, veterans also have a, a twice the incidence of ALS in the general population. Um, and here at ALS of Michigan, we're here to support the, um, we call them our pals, people with ALS, their families, caregivers, friends, um, to help them through um, their ALS journey. And so tell us a little bit about the organization too and the ways that you are supporting both these individuals that are afflicted with ALS and their families who are often providing caregiving services and support to these individuals as they go through this, this, this uh, disease that can take such a great toll on an individual's quality of life. It does. And, and what we're here to do is to make our pals' lives and their families um, better and so they can live more comfortably as their disease progresses. Um, we offer a, a equipment loan closet where we give out and loan um, wheelchairs, ramps, um, walkers. Um, we ship items all over the state um, to help with um, eating, dressing, um, anything that would make day-to-day um, -day living a little more easier. We also have a transportation program when pals can no longer drive or need wheelchair transportation. Um, we have a speech and language pathologist on staff for those who are um, beginning to have difficulty speaking so that they can still communicate with their loved ones. We offer um, communication devices um, on loan as well. And we, um, for those families who are caring for their loved ones, because most of the, the, the pals do live at home, um, we have an in-home care program where we help fund home health aides to come in and to help with caregiving, because it is a 24 hour um, round the clock job and that helps ease some of the, the burden on the families. And we also have um, support groups, um, different seminars um, around the year um, where pals, families, caregivers can tune in. And this is a really important resources too, Kim, because uh, for the, the average person that putting into imagination how they would be able to navigate their day-to-day -day life if they found it extremely hard to do just simple movements that we take for granted each and every day or we're, or we're not able to do those at all and the kind of care and the resources that would be necessary in order for them to continue living uh, some semblance of a, a regular life from that point on. These resources are really important. So for those that may have ALS or may have just gotten diagnosed for families with people with ALS, how can they tap into these resources? How do they get involved? They can contact us at 248-354-6100 or visit our website at www.alsofmichigan.org or they can also find us on the sharedetroit.org website and all of our staff are here to support them. We serve the entire state. We have a very far reach and um, we're here, like I said, throughout their journey. So as um, physical changes happen, we're able to um, guide them to different resources and services that we provide, but also um, other services out in the community. 
and, and it's tough with a uh, with a condition like ALS or with, with other diseases that are often lumped into those similar cat into that same sort of a category like MS or, or Parkinson's for people on, outside of families that are afflicted with this with this disease or those that individually who have ALS to understand just how much of a toll this takes on them mentally as well you also provide support groups uh, through the through ALS of Michigan can you tell us about those support groups and how people can get involved in them both if they have ALS or they want to provide some that some that, that support themselves sure all of our support groups right now are over zoom which for for some of the folks with ALS it makes it easier because sometimes it is hard hard to get out so they're all over zoom um, we have support groups that are open to the pals the family members and the caregivers um, and there's two of those per month. And then we have a caregivers only support group once a month um, that um, specifically focuses on um, some of the needs and the issues that the caregivers are going through because they also need a lot of support during this, this journey. And for them to take care of themselves um, can help them take care of their, um, their family members better. And a lot of that too involves having the information you need to know about resources that are available to you in the community to be able to uh, help you navigate a, a brave and, and new way of life that you and or those uh, loved ones in your life are uh, are going to be embarking on. And so you also provide some free workshops and, and conferences as well. Can you tell us what those consist of and what sort of information people can obtain through these various workshops and other programs? Sure, the workshops are also by Zoom and they, they cover a, a broad spectrum of topics. Some practical things like social security disability, um, estate planning, power of attorney, things you know that you should get in order um, once a diagnosis comes along. Then we have more um, everyday types of um, subjects, um, making your home more accessible, um, the different medical equipment that is available and how it's used and, and what it can um, help with. Um, and then things around um, how to find hope in the, in the light of a devastate, devastating diagnosis. Um, how to, like I mentioned before, self-care for caregivers. How do you take care of yourself when you're busy taking care of someone else? Um, and how to cope with um, grief or impending loss. So a broad spectrum of um, workshops. Um, they're all recorded and up on our website. So it's they're on demand and available at any time. You can find more information on ALS of Michigan by visiting their website, alsofmichigan.org. That is alsofmichigan.org. Or find them in the find a nonprofit section on Share Detroit's website at, on sharedetroit.org, where they are one of over 350 charities and nonprofits supported on that platform that join us each and every week on the MegaCast. Joining us at the moment is Kim Graziosi, the executive director of ALS of Michigan, with us on today's edition of the MegaCast. In terms of ways that the public can get involved, whether they uh, have someone with MS in their families, or they've known someone with MS, or they just want to get involved and help people in need in our communities. How can people get involved with ALS of Michigan? Well, right now we actually have our online auction going on. Um, that's one way to support where you can actually um, get a little something and um, give a little money at the same time. Um, if you go on our homepage, you'll see the link to the auction. We also have um, our walks in the fall. Um, and Lansing, um, Lansing, Midland, and two down here in Metro Detroit at Stony Creek and um, Kensington Metro Parks. That's a great way um, to come out and support um, Michigan's ALS community. And then um, we always need volunteers for these events, leading up to the events, as well as um, volunteers um, in the office um, throughout the year can find information on all the different volunteer opportunities, uh, some of the resources provided by ALS of Michigan, and other ways you can get involved and donate and support their programs and services as well at alsofmichigan.org or sharedetroit.org, which will also list some of these many different volunteer opportunities 
uh, and ways that you can help this organization and over 350 others right here in the Metro Detroit area. Kim, uh, before uh, we let you go, uh, there's so much that is known about ALS, but for those that don't have somebody with ALS in their life, aren't seeing ALS affecting individuals nearby them every single day, what do you wish more people knew about ALS? Well, unfortunately, the, the incidence is on the rise. Um, there's expected to be a 70% increase um, in cases worldwide by 2040. Um, every 90 minutes right now, someone is being diagnosed with ALS. Um, and so unfortunately, um, until there's a, a cure, um, cases will be on the rise. Um, and, and until there is that cure, ALS of Michigan is going to be here supporting the um, ALS Michigan community. We are Michigan-based. All our money stays here in the state to support our services and our residents with ALS. Um, so, um, like I said, until that that causes um, a cure is found and we're put out of business, we'll, we'll still be here serving ALS um, community here in Michigan. They have been serving families and individuals with ALS right here in the Great Lakes State since 1978, 45 years and counting of service. You can learn more information, ways that you can get involved and help ALS of Michigan on their website, alsofmichigan.org, or by visiting sharedetroit.org as well. Kim, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's nice being on the show.